Um, I've written a lot about creativity and people often say that you can't teach creativity and you can't assess it. Creativity, as I see it, is the process of having original ideas that have value. There are three bits to that. It's a process, it's not an event, it's, but it's rarely the case that if you're working on a creative project that you get the exact final version at your first attempt. That's true whether you're working on a mathematical theorem or a scientific hypothesis or an experiment or designing a bridge or a house or composing a piece of music. It's normally a process of trial and error. And we know quite a lot about that process and how it works, some of the phases it typically goes through, some of the blocks to it and how you can unblock them. Secondly, it's about original thinking. It doesn't have to be original to the whole world, but it certainly has to be original to you. Uh, it may be original to your peer group. It may sometimes you know, break the way people have thought about something since the beginning of time, but it's not a requirement of creativity that it has to be uh, new to the planet. And thirdly, it's about value. And people often contest this and say, well, whose values? And that's exactly the point. All creative processes involve evaluation making judgments about whether it feels right. You can see it, you know, if you're writing a poem or if you're doing a design or planning a speech, it's, is that right? You're crossing it out, it doesn't feel right. It's not really what I mean. I'm not sure that's quite the way to go. Uh, so you're making judgments all the time. So creativity isn't some freewheeling process from start to finish. There's often um, a, a, an early stage to it where you're brainstorming, hypothesizing, but then it's work, it's crafting, and it's trying again and trying to get it right. So that's how I define it. Now the thing is about creativity that you can be creative in anything. People often say they're not creative. What they mean very often in my experience is they're not very arty. You know, they, can't, uh, they can't play an instrument or, or they don't paint or they don't do theatre or dance. So all, all those things in the arts can be very, very creative. But you can be creative in anything. You can be a creative mathematician, a creative chemist, a creative physicist, a creative cook, chef, you name it. Anything that involves human intelligence is a scene of possible creative achievement. Uh, the other myth is that you can't teach it. Now, th there are two things that hinge on this. One of them is that when people say you can't teach creativity, I find that they're often basing that view on a very narrow idea of what teaching is. If, it's, if by that they mean you can't teach creativity like you can teach somebody the sequence of traffic light changes, or you can't teach people creativity like how to drive a car, well, there's some truth in that. It's not a complete truth. Uh, that you, you don't teach people to be creative through direct instruction, like do what I do and you'll be more creative now. There are aspects of learning in, in any field that you need to master skills and disciplines and techniques. But teaching is much more than direct instruction. Uh, teaching is a process of enabling, it's a process of giving people opportunities, it's a process of encouragement, it's a process of inspiration and of mentoring. And I've been involved in projects all around the world, in academies and other places where it, it's demonstrably true that gifted teachers help people to discover their creative talents, to nurture them and to hone them, and to become more creative as a result. To understand that you can teach creativity, we need a more expansive and enriched conception of what teaching is and how it actually works. And when people say you can't assess it, it's not true either. I think it's because people, again, often operate on a narrow conception of creativity, that it's just some freewheeling process that any idea will do. The clue to understanding that you can assess creativity is to go back to the definition, that it's about original ideas that have value. And in any particular field, you have to identify the criteria for originality, for example. You have to identify what you mean by value. And I remember years ago, uh, I was working on a university committee and somebody was saying, well, how would you ever judge a novel? Uh, how would you judge how creative it is? I said, well, you'd ask some novelists about that. How would you judge a mathematical paper? Well, you ask people who know about that discipline in the field to make judgments about whether it does count as original. If you're looking at young children's drawing, you would apply different criteria than if you were assessing the success of the roof of the Sistine Chapel. I remember uh, years ago at the, the TED conference telling the story of the little girl who uh, hardly ever paid attention in class. And in this particular class, she did. The, teacher was running a drawing lesson and so the little girl was over in the corner and she normally didn't pay attention but she was completely absorbed and the teacher went over to her and said what are you drawing and the girl said I'm drawing a picture of God and the teacher said but nobody knows what God looks like and the girl said they will in a minute you see what I love about that story is the confidence 
the girl has in her own drawing. Well, you wouldn't apply the same criteria to a five-year-old's drawing as you would to you know, a seasoned uh, animator or cartoonist or an architect. So you can assess creativity providing you're clear on the criteria of originality and the value. And as soon as we get clear on those issues, they can be taught, they can be assessed. We're then in a position to integrate it properly into the entire curriculum, not as some afterthought, but as a way of transforming the power of teaching and of learning.